Hi, I'm Greg Perkins with Oak Ridge Bellows. What we're talking about today is installation of expansion joints. What you need to know about uh, these expansion joints and how they get installed. First thing you're going to notice when you get these things out in the field is they're going to have these yellow shipping bars, usually angle iron, that are across them. And they may even say remove after installation. Here's what you need to know about that. Remove after installation. That's right. You want to keep those things on there. They are, they're there to size the expansion joint and keep it within a certain overall length. If you somehow have got a big gap and, and hey, it's an expansion joint, it should flex. You want to you want to move that expansion joint to make a, the, it fit? Don't do that. It's been sized for a reason. If, if you want to do that, call the factory first. But these things you want to leave on there until you tack this thing in place and you welded it out and installed it in place. You've got flanges after it's been bolted in. Now, don't forget to remove these things. You want to remove them after any hydro test or after any pneumatic test of the piping system. You don't want these things in place trying to restrain the pressure thrust of the expansion joint. It, the, the piping system or the hardware, that's what that's designed to do. You don't want these things to be there uh, when you do that because that will interfere with the proper test. The other thing you need to know is, oh, by, and by the way, when you remove these things, you want to, uh, the main thing when you're installing expansion joint is you want to be careful to protect the bellows. Well, in this case, we've got covers. They're in here. They're protecting that bellows. You know a whole lot of chance on this particular expansion joint we're going to damage that bellows. But, say we didn't have a cover here. What you want to do is you want to, you want to wrap that bellows in something. You want to take a welding blanket or you want to lay it over there. Because you've got guys that may be welding in this area or if you're going to cut these things off, there's any number of ways they cut them off in the field. I would recommend uh, using what they call a porta band, a portable band saw, to, to, to cut these things off. And you can cut them, you know, you can cut them back, you know, really close to where they're attached, and you can you can leave a little bit of that there. But you want to cut away from the bellows. In this case, it's a cover, probably not going to matter. But you always want to cut away from the be uh, the bellows. If for some reason you're using a torch, you want to cut away. You don't want any splatter going on that bellows. Remember. That bellows is going to be a sixteenth of an inch thick or thinner. And that's really easy to damage. You can whack this pipe with a hammer and you're not going to get much damage. You whack the bellows and you're going to dent it and you're going to have to watch our video on what do you do with a, with a dented bellows. After you have removed these things, you, well actually before you do anything, you want to check and make sure you got the expansion joint installed in the correct orientation. A lot of times it doesn't matter. It's just a bellows with a couple of weld ends or a couple of flanges. It's key if you have a liner on the inside, then it becomes directional. And here we know we got a liner. I know we got a liner on the inside of it because I can reach down there and it's got a liner on the inside of it. But right here, if you if you can see that, there's an arrow that is here on the deposit. Somewhere on the expansion joint, if it's got a liner on the inside of it, you're going to have a tag. And it's going to have an arrow. It's going to show you which direction the liner is in. The attached end is always upstream, meaning the flow is this direction. And and put that liner accordingly. In this expansion joint, there's only really one way. Up. Uh, this is a pressure balance expansion. Really, only one way it's going to go in. But we're a single. Then, if it were installed backwards, what would happen is if it was high flow, you could lose that liner uh, down the line, and you don't want that. Okay, so. Look for the arrow if there's a liner on the inside. All right, where were we? We were past the the, uh, uh, the brackets here, past uh, the shipping bars. If it has high rods or threaded rods or limit rods or control rods, if it has the word rod in it, if you see these things right here, there's a reason why they're there. And it may not necessarily be clear when you're looking at the expansion joint, but these will almost always or should always be double nutted or cotter pinned or tack welded so that these nuts are fixed in place. There's a reason why they're fixed in place. You shouldn't be moving those. Nobody in the field should be breaking the tack welds on these nuts and backing them off. They're sized there for a reason. If for some reason somebody in the field, you all get together and you talk about it and you think there's a real good reason why those rods or those nuts ought to be backed off and readjusted, call the factory and get that cleared with, with the factory guys. Call us. Uh, we'll tell you if you can do that or not. They're there for a reason. 
You don't want to mess with those. They should be locked in place. All right, for any other information about installation, I think we pretty much covered it for, for any number of styles of expansion joints, but there are some other types. And uh, give us a call or go to our website at www.oakridgebellows.com for more videos uh, and more, more documentation.